guys, welcome back. So I'm going to tell you a, a wee nymph I call the OC Olive Chartreuse Nymph. Um, I think you like this one. Um, the hook on the vase is a Camazon B175 in a size 10. Ties down to a size 14. Um, also good tied on a, a B170 if, uh, if you wish. The thread that I'm going to use to tie the, the fly is the Uni 380 in Chartreuse. So I'm just going to come down the shank around about a third or just to where you want your thorax to begin just to give you a measurement and just remove the waist tag of thread now the tail it's just cock pheasant fibers however I've tied this one golden olive so I know anywhere between four and a half a dozen. It just depends what way you like your tail and how thick you like it. Now the length that I want my tail is around about the length of the body of the back. You can have it longer or shorter if you wish. That, that's entirely up to you. You'll be dressing the fly. Now the get my scissors would be good. Just going to come in and trim that the length of the body, the rib. I'm going to use a uni mailer and clear. So I'll just cut it like this. And we're going to colour it up. It's also good with a, obviously a gold rib, as we all know. Right, just going to offer the uni mailer up to the hook. Come around with a turn, just gonna pull it in around about the length of that body and then just work our, our thread forward, tying everything in. And then before I come back down, I like to come in with my green sharpie. This just allows the ink to dry. I just want to be a pheasant tail again. Only this time I've died at a, this lovely light olive. Uh, fibers for the body, I just take off a, from this guy, it's just a good pinch. Um, not going to bother with the counting process there. Like, and then I'm just going to pull these in, just as tight as a dirt go. Then work my thread forward. And I want to put a wee bit of taper, a taper into the body. So I'm going to bring the thread back down halfway and then back up. <coughs> then I'll come up with the, the fasten tail. I'll just come up and touching turns. Sort of way let the pheasant tail flatten out if you like. Just get a turn in there over the, the pheasant tail, get my rib out of the way, a couple of turns onto the hook. I'll just do this a couple of times, guys, just to secure it all in. And then I just come in and trim away the waist. With a rib, I don't know, three to four times. Yet again, ribs up to you. Many times you want to come up. Now, what I like to do is to work my thread forward, tying in the, the uni mailer. Bring it forward there, stretch it out right to the eye, and then come in and fold it back. It's just help just helps the, the fly last a wee bit longer because it's not a very robust pattern this one with the pheasant tail and then the the mailer. Now for the thorax cover you can go back to your um golden olive pheasant tail. However, I just put on the, the light olive. So yet again good good bunch of fibers there, probably around about ten. If we are counting, 
and then just offer this up to the, the hook just pull it in the, the length I just like to make sure that the pheasant tail is spread over and it's sort of way the breadth of the shank and then work our thread up just have a wee check there I'm happy with that and we'll quickly come down over the, the cut ends and back up now, I've done a wee fly called the amber nymph and what you get to do is you can put your thorax material on at this point and then just obviously wind on your your hackle and then pull your, your thorax over but this is a different way to do it and you may have seen this before now, the, f the feather that I'm using here this is a English partridge it's dyed chartreuse so I'm just going to come in and take some of the fibers right. just going to check here I don't need all of those so I'm going to come in and remove some now if you like your nymphs leggy leave as much fibre as you possibly can on the on the feather that's going to be plenty for me and then we're just going to offer this up with the basically the shiny side, the good side of the feather onto the thorax so just offer it up, just bring everything back the fibres that I still want to keep on the fly, come around with a turn that'll bring it up on top now I want the fibres to start where the pheasant tail is tied in for the thorax and work my thread forward, come in and clip away the waist. Just have to be gentle at that point because the English part reach is not the most robust fibre. The thorax itself, this is the traditional Irish dubbing, and I've blended it with green olive bug dub. The traditional Irish dubbing is the Neurn Sudi Alve, I think it's called. So just come in and get our dubbing started. And then you can tighten up as you go here. And you can build your thorax up the I mean whatever height that you like. I know a lot of people like it really pronounced. Some people like it less pronounced. It's up to you, right? A couple of turns in. Make sure all the fibers are back. Get your thread in front. Then we can bring over our English partridge. And like I say, you just want to be as gentle as you can at this point. Just bring with a pinch and loop. Thread down to the eye again, guys. Just this is just to secure it in. And then work with thread back up. You should be able to break that off and then come around with your apple pheasant tail. Right. Just want to make sure that these are coming over straight. Yeah, that's a wee bit better. Just hold it there. Come over with your thread. A couple of turns will hold that. Don't need to be going nuts. The thread turns at this point. And sweep back any fibers. And then we'll just tidy up. Just build up our head a wee bit. Then we'll come in with our book finishing tool. Just the one book finish. Put your thread take control of your tiny thread. Be favor there. I'm trying to take that away. Then you can bring out your your little flags now. I tie you this for a couple of friends. The size they like it. The size it. Um, for the mayfly, just want to come in with a wee drop of super glue. Just be careful. Rather get it in the eye at this point, folks. 
rather than on them rather than on them addressing. So there you go guys, that's the OC nymph. It's basically just a, an olive chartreuse nymph that has worked well. I've been that for a few years. <coughs> like I say, bigger sizes. Um, some of the frames like it in for the for the mayfly. So there you go guys, that's another way to tie on your legs for your nymphs as well as using the winding the haggle on at the at the front of the hook. But that's up to you, so you you're gonna be dressing it. Um, as always, many thanks for taking the time to view the video. It's greatly appreciated. Um, if this is the first time watching one of, one of my videos, please consider subscribing. Um, just helps the wee channel grow. And until the next time, be good and take care of yourselves. And uh, all being well, I'll uh, catch you on the next one, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.